Okay, anyways, I think we can get started. Uh, it's a four or five right now. Uh, so anyways, uh, thank you everyone uh, for joining in today. Welcome to the Connected uh, Insights Web Summit and to today's webinar hosted by Paul Arabami. Uh, there's gonna be a, a lot of value packed into today's session. So make the most of it by engaging with our uh, speaker today. Uh, just to tell you a little bit about myself, my name is uh, Priyash Akari, and I'm a co-founder and partner at Connected Law. Uh, Connected Law is the legal advisory arm of Consolidon. And what we do is uh, we're a new age law firm and we connect uh, clients with senior lawyers and boutique firms uh, with special with uh, with the relevant expertise. So, for example, if if there's an IP matter that a client needs assistance with, then we understand what the client uh, requires, and and we connect them with uh, a boutique IP firm or a, or a senior IP lawyer. Uh, so that's it about myself. Uh, I'm going to now uh, a quick introduction to uh, Paul. Paul, perhaps you could introduce yourself. He's the speaker for today, and uh, he's going to be taking us through facility management strategy and the triple bottom line. Would love to know. Uh, would you know? I'm sure the attendees would love to know more about you. Okay, sure. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Priya Sha, for yeah. that introduction. Um, so this is me, uh, Paul Erubami. I am the CEO and founder of Max Migo Limited. Um, Max Migo is um, a facility management uh, organization providing advisory services and technology for the built environment. My uh, experience is over 20 years. I uh, started out as an architect and then um, had a master's degree in industrial engineering and operations management to solidify my um, uh, efficiency, process efficiencies, and management uh, capability. I'm also certified and chartered with RYCS, that's the Royal Institution of Chartered Surveyors, the International Facility Management Association, and the uh, Institute of Workplace and Facility Management in the UK. I have quite some experience working across multinational organizations across the world. I uh, spent a lot of my uh, time in Nigeria and now um, uh, retired uh, from uh, self-employment and been running Max Migo for the last six years. Um, so what we do basically is to provide uh, management outsourcing solutions for the built environment. So uh, property owners, construction and developers uh, in this space get advisory services from us. Energy efficiency is a big one for us now. Uh, because uh, you know the energy markets are not only turbulent, but it's affecting business in more ways than we can imagine. So we have IoT-based monitoring and analytics uh, solutions for energy efficiency. Uh, we provide quality and integrity audits and inspections. We do renovations and maintenance projects as well. Uh, cost reduction is a big, big uh, aspect of uh, our, our businesses. That uh, if you if you're not making money, you uh, you, you shouldn't be wasting money as well. So uh, that's a big area of our services. And then we we'll provide the uh, asset management, workplace productivity and facility management training. So uh, basically this is an area of business that has been mostly uh, neglected. Uh, many businesses don't, uh, you, know, act, act, you know, kind of acquire the body of knowledge to train their people on facility management and, and, and they bleed through there. And, and part of the reason why we're doing this uh, webinar today and then technologies like integrated workplace management systems, computer-aided facility management, uh, building information modeling that helps you know, uh, for efficient and effective management of our workspaces. And finally, we do procurement and outsource out desk services, uh, service desk services. So what this basically means is that we can take away the, the pain and, 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 and uh, from the uh, client um, to manage the user experiences in their spaces by um, handling the outsourced uh, service based uh, services for them. Uh, so going straight into the, uh, the, the, the program for today, uh, I, I've, I've just put together this, uh, 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 you know, these slides for us to, uh, you know, like place with us for us to have some discussions. Uh, I would like to, you know, kind of run through the content and then uh, ask you to uh, note your questions. But if you do write your questions down, um, in the um, 
in the chat box. I'll stop to, to take them as we go on as well. Okay, so uh, we're going to look at introduction to facility management strategic planning. Uh, we're going to look at a big picture view of corporate strategy and how facility management strategy planning affects corporate strategy. We're going to look at the role of facility management in the triple bottom line of profit, people, and planet. So basically, we we, we, we're moving away, and I think business globally, uh, businesses are moving away from that uh, single uh, focus bottom line of you know, finance or economic uh, uh, viability to now look at um, the other you know, ways of uh, being valuable as an organization or as a business, uh, looking at social and uh, environmental uh, impact of values. We'll look at how facility management contributes to those bottom lines, all three. And then we'll look at the role of facility management in various stages of the business life cycle. So many founders and business owners go on, you know, uh, you know, start a business, uh, focus on all of the uh, products, the operations, and focus a lot on the um, uh, technical delivery of the uh, service they have on offer. But uh, they don't pay so much attention uh, to the physical environment, you know. Um, and this affects you know, virtually everything from how you acquire talents to work for you. It affects productivity of people that work in the, in the organization. It affects your public perception and image as a sustainable organization, uh, which also has a way of driving uh, you know, uh, value you know, to your brand. And also it affects the way uh, uh, your profits is, is impacted because basically if you're making so much money from one end uh, from the revenue side and you are losing it or bleeding out of it on the cost or expense side, then definitely um, you will end up with, you know, probably where you started or, or below. And that's what we are trying to uh, uh, focus on today. So we're, we're blending the, the whole concept of sustainability, uh, the triple bottom line, which is part of that, and strategy for the FM uh, function as a way to drive uh, business growth um, for, startups and in fact all kinds of all sizes of organizations you can either make more money or stop wasting more money to be profitable so basically uh, what fm can do to help you uh, uh, is not to help you make more money uh, in the literal sense uh, but make you uh, stop wasting money but again we also help you make more money because of the productivity impact of strategic facility management on your business so if people are more productive, then definitely you're going to make more money. So that's the whole uh, uh, concept we're going to be covering in today's um, webinar. Uh, Corporate strategic plan is the outline of the direction of the organization uh, in, the, in the broad sense, uh, long-term plans as to uh, the methods and actions they will take uh, in the operation. Uh, you, you know where you're going in your business and you create a plan. What does the FM of facility management function uh, has to play. What role do we uh, play in that in that process? Uh, the the core processes of the organization uh, will operate within physical spaces, um, and then technical infrastructure, uh, as well as of employee uh, and organizational processes. So what the facility management does is to integrate this uh, place process and uh, uh, technology approach to your delivery. So Everything that has to do with the core business is supported uh, from behind um, by facility management and strategy um, in the FM space is really important because if you if you go haphazard without uh, any kind of structure, uh, then definitely you will not get the best results from your deployments of uh, FM processes. So facility management has indirect impacts on the environment, the society and the economy as managers of real estate assets and infrastructure related construction. So basically, um, you know, even in, in the era of uh, digital businesses and businesses uh, existing in the clouds, um, like we say, sometimes every organization, uh, you know, real, really needs to have some kind of physical space. Uh, even if they're in the cloud, the servers are based somewhere and they are consuming electricity somewhere. There's energy being consumed and there are people actually uh, you know, maintaining those servers. So basically, facility management is there's no organization that is uh, not going to benefit from uh, deploying facility management uh, uh, processes or, or, or systems. Uh, some common business challenges that uh, you know we, we need to grapple with: uh, profitability is the, the first uh, uh, big aspect of it. And, and you know, the profitability equation is 
it's pretty simple. It's, 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 uh, when you have your revenue, you, you, you take out your, your expenses and then you have your, your profit, right? So um, when, we, when we look at the analysis of what your expenses are, uh, you'll find out that uh, apart from the personnel cost or HRO cost, uh, your expenses on your fiscal spaces and your technical infrastructure comes next. And, and this is a very uh, significant area. If that expense is not controlled, if not optimized for value, then of course your profitability is gonna be affected. Um, and then as we, as we mature in our organizations, uh, get, become bigger, uh, organization goes through several you know, stages in their life cycle. Uh, assets begin to age, um, there's degradation, there's deterioration, and uh, without facility management in place, you will definitely suffer a lot of production uh, losses. Um, and then escalating cost of utilities. Uh, it, it used to be taken for almost for granted that that's just one of the expense line items, right? Uh, utilities, energy costs, and so on and so forth. But the reality now is that you're beginning to see how those energy costs and utility expenses are piling up um, to affect organizations of, of you know, uh, profitability. And then increasing legislative squeeze and changing standards due to stakeholder sophistication. Clients, businesses, uh, you know, stakeholders in the built environment and business generally are becoming more sophisticated. Um, and as such, uh, you, you need to uh, strategize more on how to give uh, people better user experiences when they come, uh, when they experience your, your spaces, for example, uh, in malls or offices. Um, otherwise, you'll be perceived as uh, not being a high quality environment and you could lose business due to such perception. So the traditional emphasis on financial or economic bottom line approaches, uh, such as waste reduction and improving energy efficiency is no longer sufficient in combating these challenges. And so that's why we are looking at it uh, from the standpoint of the triple bottom line. Uh, but, but, but the first thing we need to just establish is the whole uh, strategy framework. Every organization uh, is set up because of a certain customer segment. So the organization set up its own strategy uh, based on its understanding of its uh, customers at the strategic purpose level, uh, and then uh, create a strategic planning level that includes some set of mission, vision, values, culture, and objectives, which the facility management organization aligns with to create portfolio strategies and master plans uh, that will help to, uh, you know, kind of provide the, the resources to support the core, core business. And for, for most organizations, you need to now really operate facilities. You need to operate the spaces, you need to maintain, you need to have budgets and design and construction. All of these things cannot be done, you know, just uh, uh, in, in a disorganized way. And so uh, the, there must be a clear alignment between the uh, facility management function, the strategy uh, at the FM level with that of the entire organization. Otherwise, everything we do uh, in terms of budgets for facilities and, and properties and design and construction projects, operations and maintenance will all go wrong, basically. Um, we could spend too much, we could provide spaces and services that will not meet the needs of the users. Um, we could uh, you know, be impacting the environment negatively, we could be impacting people's well-being negatively and without even knowing uh, what is going on, basically. And then uh, below that level of practical planning, uh, there is execution level, measurements and then the feedback level which is a continuous improvement process to keep improving strategy so this is the first thing that needs to be understood by businesses uh, and this is really missing in most of our businesses we, we set up the organizational strategy and then uh, we don't involve people who are managing our physical spaces with that strategy we don't inform them we don't train them we don't educate them we don't create some kind of alignment between uh, our fiscal workspaces and the strategy of the entire organization. So they do things uh, just the way they want or the way they like, which will not be as effective as we hoped. Uh, so the organization strategic plan is the, is, is, is the first or the second level there after the customer's uh, level. And, and, and this strategy plan needs to include, uh, and these are information that needs to be made available to the, the people, the teams, managing the physical workspace and technical infrastructure of the organization. What's our financial position and direction? Uh, what's our current situation with market share and profitability? And how are we doing with this going forward in terms of our projections? 
uh, current and upcoming competitors, current business model and plans for changing the business model, if there is any, or how that business model is going to be tweaked, uh, plan projects, uh, plan direction over three to five years, strategic objectives, goals, and means to achieve them. These are information that normally stays with the C-suite, that stays with the executives, and they just know exactly what, what the, the business is, is, is going to head, the direction the business is going to head uh, to us, but this information is not shared with uh, people who manage the fiscal workplace. If that, is, if that is done, then we can now challenge the teams um, managing the fiscal workspace to have the strategic uh, plan, you know, uh, uh, two to five years plan and capacity the entire portfolio of their own or lease space, to set the strategic facility goals based on the organization's strategic business objectives. That's the whole idea. If I'm going to set up facility management strategy, it has to be aligned. And for it to be aligned, I must have information of corporate strategy. That's the only way I can create uh, FM strategies that will uh, provide that uh, uh, kind of alignment. And the process starts from understanding, understanding the organization's mission, vision, values, and goals, financial performance, customer knowledge, internal business processes, and learning and growth, uh, uh, analytics techniques such as SWOT, scan, scenario planning, and other uh, techniques are used for analyzing. Uh, what that data will acquire from the understanding the business and then creating plans to help meet the organization's uh, uh, long-term uh, needs. In essence, the facility management function or the uh, uh, strategy uh, is to have, uh, you know, be ahead of the curve all the time. So if the mission is moving in a particular direction, have FM strategy and systems in place to ensure that we can continue to act in ways that the business will not be frustrated or uh, be hampered. Uh, in, his, in, his, in his progress. So uh, looking at uh, uh, sustainability of, of services, uh, facility management uh, strategy is, is supposed to be based on uh, you know, a sustainable business uh, uh, process model where there are economic uh, considerations, there are social considerations, and then there are uh, environmental uh, considerations. Uh, by way of definition, uh, the ability to meet the needs of the present without compromising the ability of the future generation to meet their own needs is the general definition of sustainability that was uh, adopted since 1987. Uh, you know, and, and, and to break that down to the context of what we are discussing, I would say we need to protect and secure the functionality of the components of the ecosystem for the present and future generations. And for FMs, it's a process of integrating people, place, and businesses it, it, so that the organization can optimize uh, economic, environmental, and social benefits of sustainability. In essence, uh, we are not going to run the business without uh, uh, and just thinking about you know, profit, profit, profit. We're going to think about our image. We're going to think about our impact to the environment and on um, people that both uh, work for the organization and the communities that the organization serves and, and the world at large. So from the standpoint of facility management, we look at the inputs, the processes, and the outputs of sustainability uh, facility management as a strategic framework for supporting the organization. Uh, the inputs into the uh, uh, facility management uh, uh, strategy uh, from a sustainability standpoint are energy. Uh, we consume energy for all of our operations. Uh, uh, energy is a big part of what we do. Uh, in fact, uh, if, you, if, your, if your business is growing, the expectation is that you'll be consuming more energy. Uh, but as facility managers, uh, with a sustainability mindset, we talk about uh, using energy sustainably, uh, optimizing, eliminating waste, thereby improving energy performance. So energy can increase, but the performance needs to be uh, enhanced, basically. So the uh, metrics uh, for measuring energy efficiency will have to be uh, uh, per value or per output, uh, unit of output. So if you're producing, what kind of production or services you're, you're, you're delivering, uh, being able to have energy that uh, you can measure how your energy consumption is dropping per unit, uh, so that even if your unit of output or production is increasing, your energy performance should be, uh, per unit energy consumed should be uh, reducing. Same thing with water. Water is a, a finite resource. Um, especially portable water and water we use for most of our industrial processes uh, and then materials and resources. We need to manage them sustainably. And then uh, what do we deliver as facility managers uh, uh, for the workplace? What does the business benefit? 
workplace management, in the environmental quality and quality of service. All of this uh, ties to the processes for which the business delivers its core, uh, you know, outputs of product, of, of, of product as well as the uh, well-being of the people who are in the organization. Uh, how, how does this affect our businesses? Uh, we can attract the best talent. We can, we can uh, you know, uh, have minimal impact on, on people uh, within the organization, negative impacts, I'll say. And then uh, we have waste coming out of our use of, of, of resources, uh, waste in terms of uh, sewage and refuse, uh, and then the side impact of our construction and, and our uh, habitation of, of the spaces. We want to minimize these impacts because we're taking things from the edge, using it to get what we want in our processes, and then we are dumping back you know, things in the earth, which uh, can further deteriorate or degrade the, the value of the environment that we live in and suck all these uh, resources from. So it's more about responsibility uh, in addition to uh, uh, profitability, not to leave uh, one out. So typically, how, how, when, when a business is, uh, is formed, uh, takes up spaces, many organizations probably don't consider the process, uh, the life cycle of the, of the asset or facilities, because we just see it's already there, we acquire it and we use it. But every space that we occupy, every uh, functional activity done in spaces, uh, we should learn uh, you know, how we get about our infrastructure, uh, physical assets, go through planning, design, construction, testing, commissioning, handover, and facility management. And in all of this, for organizations that have a good um, FM strategy, you need to have input from the facility management function for every of the stages. And I think this is something that um, is, is missing in, in many of our developments. Uh, you have uh, uh, nobody uh, putting in mind what the stakeholders and the end users experience uh, will be uh, during the process of delivering uh, physical infrastructure. So that's why you need people who are managers and experience with uh, uh, users of space to be able to advise, advise you uh, during the development cycle. So typically, uh, why, why is this important? We, we call this operational readiness. Why is it important? If you, if you, if you have an asset, uh, you, you, you think you've spent so much acquiring it for the business, uh, you hope it will last forever. Of course, nothing lasts forever. Your assets or physical assets will have their, their, their you know, uh, life cycle or their end, end time. Uh, but in, in the first consideration is that your cost of acquisition is actually significantly smaller than the cost of running it or operating it uh, over its life cycle. And that includes the, the salaries you pay to uh, uh, people who are going to work um, in that space. And, and so this particular uh, uh, slide just talks about how, how small uh, uh, cost of construction and, and, and delivery of a project is to its operations, maintenance, and capital renewal costs, just 10% of that over its useful life. And then when compared to uh, the entire uh, productivity and, and, and work that's going to take place in that uh, infrastructure, it's just 2%. So, what it means is that if you, if, you, if you build or provide infrastructure without considering people who are going to live, who are going to work, who are going to uh, worship or reside in these spaces for the various functions of, of human life uh, in those spaces, you end up, uh, you end up uh, wasting more you know, through uh, 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 you know, health and well-being deficiencies, productivity losses, and, and energy and other uh, losses on the 92%, which accounts for uh, salaries of occupants um, who are going to work in spaces. So basically, uh, we need to be mindful of the kind of uh, emphasis we place on our fiscal assets when running our business. So we don't end up working so hard to, uh, uh, for business development, acquiring customers, getting so much revenue, and losing it in, in productivity losses and operational losses in, in, the, in the building. So that's the, uh, the summary of the uh, triple bottom line. Uh, uh, three bottom lines of social, environmental, and economic. What I want to emphasize is uh, how, we, uh, how we manage the intersections between each of these bottom lines. So we ask questions like, is it equitable? Uh, you know, when we are trying to compare 
uh, an economic consideration with a social uh, for, with this, for its social impact? Does the social benefit outweigh the cost of the initiative? Is it viable when we are comparing economic and uh, environmental uh, uh, impact as well? Can the solution be implemented? Will the benefits likely be realized outweigh the cost of implementation? And then we also ask, uh, is, it bio, is it bearable uh, when considering the intersection between the environment and social? Is this initiative that's producing positive effects from the environmental standpoint having a negative impact on occupant productivity? Okay, so, so, so the whole idea here is we need to be uh, conscious that uh, uh, the business does not go on that because it's not making money uh, economic. We need to also be conscious that we're not having a negative perception of our business because of our environmental impacts. And of course, we're not impacting people's lives negatively, both those who work in the business and those who are community observers and people, uh, you, know, you know, stakeholders outside the business as well. So we look at the uh, impacts of sustainable facility management to our businesses. Environmental impact will include uh, resource conservation, reduction of waste, decrease in pollution, and this would affect, you know, uh, not just our perception, but also our profitability as well. So even if we say it's environmental impact, it does have a, an indirect impact as well on, on the business profitability. And then we talk about social impact, the impact on, on, on people generally, occupants, community, and the world, and then the social, the financial impact, which has to do with the cost of ownership, uh, so that cost of ownership, operating cost reduction, and return on investment. Every time you have uh, a new, um, an asset acquired for your business, uh, its, its initial cost is just one tiny bit like I've shared in the previous slide. Uh, the total cost of ownership is really a bigger picture that we should be focusing on and as such, not take decisions um, at the initial stage that will negatively impact uh, the total cost of ownership and our eventual profitability as a business. So organizations will grow through uh, uh, certain stages. For you to have an effective uh, FM strategy, uh, it's important to have uh, a full understanding of what kind of organization um, that we are dealing with. So uh, we cannot have a one size fits all kind of facility management strategy for all organizations. So uh, start by looking at the type of organization. Is, is it a service organization? If, if it is, uh, there's a lot of focus on customers whose change demands require short planning horizons. Uh, FM strategy could focus on rapid organized chain management, so more flexibility. For manufacturing organizations, there are large differences between facilities. Personal equipment usually require a site-specific strategy. So that's basically what, what, what I started with you. You need to understand the kind of organization to know uh, what kind of FM strategy to, to deploy. Whether it's a government organization, uh, there's a lot of regulations and, and, and strict uh, ways of doing things in the public sector, uh, you know, and then you, you know, have to have strategies that also align with those, uh, with that type of organization. Uh, what about completed strategy? The organization could be uh, uh, just using the Michael Potter, uh, 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 you know, uh, differentiation um, uh, approach for completed strategy. Uh, you could have a cost leadership strategy as a business. Uh, the organization pursues efficiency through economies of scale, and standardization of products. What does the FM strategy contribute to this? Respond by increasing outsourcing and standardization of services. And you have differentiation strategy. The mission charges a premium for actual or perceived uniqueness in a product, process, or service. The FM strategies would create personalized services and unique spaces. Okay, so you, you, you know of some organizations that have you know, used this uh, facility management strategies to create uh, distinct, unique user experiences in their shops, uh, you know, in places where you test out their products and, and, and such experiences goes, to, goes a long way to add value to the strategy of the entire organization. Uh, when it's market segmentation, for example, the organization finds niche market segments that are rest resistant to competitors due to entry barriers or the organization strength. And the FM strategy is to increase this niche strength. So it's, it's all about focus and alignment. Uh, but without the FM strategy, the mission strategy can actually falter, and that's exactly where, uh, where this is going. Uh, when you take the product life cycle approach of the organization, uh, organization's product could be at the growth stage, at the maturity stage, or at the decline stage. Uh, you know, at the growth stage, they allow temporary negative cash flow to increase production capacity or market share. That's the mission strategy. 
Uh, but the FM strategy in response to that is to propose both strategies for growth and teamwork. Uh, in the maturity stage of the product life cycle, sustain reinvestments if products maintain or grow market share. Remove bottlenecks, meet but do not exceed capacity needs and continually improve services. That should be your FM strategy response. In the declining stage, harvest returns from prior investments and prior and pursue only low risk options with short payback periods. Uh, the FM's response typically should be uh, maintain equipment and increase cash flow by reducing facility investments. So if an FM is operating in an environment that is a uh, uh, declining product life cycle, for example, and is trying to acquire new assets, uh, uh, asset replacement, probably will be, will say he's, he's, he's making a, a, a huge mistake. So the, the value of, sustainable FM, you know, why should you have FM strategy? Why should you have an FM system in place? Costs, definitely, you lower your costs because companies are actually hemorrhaging uh, from, uh, uh, you know, overhead costs uh, in, their, in their property spaces. You have a healthier environment. This also leads to uh, more productivity from the, uh, the workforce, uh, increased comfort, increased uh, indoor air quality, increased productivity, increase asset value, uh, greater market share and value. And, and this comes uh, from both, both angles, yeah? both from the employees internally who are producing you know, better because they are more productive, and also from the perception of the public, uh, seeing you as, a, as a, an organization that they can, that they can, um, that they can uh, trust. Okay, so uh, uh, some of the things uh, I've, I've highlighted uh, uh, in this uh, presentation so far uh, drives to the fact that we, we need to focus on uh, what brings us value as a business, uh, customer satisfaction, community satisfaction, and, and employee satisfaction. Just a few examples of how FM strategy can actually add uh, substantial value. Uh, take lighting improvements, for example, it can improve, uh, increase productivity, uh, gains, productivity gains from uh, heating, ventilation, air conditioning improvements. Uh, you also have reduced absenteeism, reduction in sick leave, uh, reduced illnesses, you know, from uh, an, a healthier environment, as well as reduction in headache if you uh, are able to provide uh, a proper lighting uh, environment for your, for your staff. Uh, and then you know, uh, in a, in a, in a, to look at it, to look at a bigger uh, picture or uh, more specific uh, opportunities uh, for deploying FM strategy uh, and aligning it to the organization strategy. Uh, just, I'm, I'm going to look at a few environmental impacts of having a sustainable FM uh, strategy in place. Uh, you have reduced uh, fossil fuel uh, um, and energy use. You have reduced greenhouse emission. Uh, reduce office lighting, power density, and peak energy demand. You have uh, uh, energy supplies from renewable sources. You know, if you begin to have on, look at your energy mixes, uh, because that's part of the thing that sustainable F FM uh, strategy would, would uh, attend to. Uh, global warming and, and uh, from, uh, from uh, uh, greenhouse uh, uh, gases and other air conditioning refrigerants, uh, you eliminate or reduce them. Water consumption is also a big uh, factor in our facility management. Uh, we need to also, uh, you know, watch uh, how we use water for hygiene, portable landscaping, and cooling towers. Uh, recycling, uh, you know, is, is something uh, you can also integrate into your FM strategy. Uh, and then how to manage wastewater, how to manage uh, indoor pollutants. Some of us think that we, we may not even be conversant with how. Uh, our indoor air quality gets really eroded uh, with pollutants and hazardous uh, materials. And then as our buildings get older, uh, they also need to have you know, some kind of long-term plan for obsolescence as part of our uh, uh, facility management strategy. So thinking about how to reuse uh, materials to upgrade, you know, repair and renovate instead of you know, scrapping and, and, and restarting uh, acquisition for new assets. Uh, those are some of the things that uh, we can say we benefit from the environmental standpoint uh, for deploying strategic facility management uh, in our businesses. And then on the social side, it's, it's huge, you know, it's huge. Um, uh, people make the businesses. People are the customers. 
uh, people are the regulators and stakeholders generally and such uh, without a clear focus on how we take care of our people uh, no matter where they stay on the uh, in the uh, in the stakeholders charts as it were uh, we may not be running a sustainable business and our strategy may, may falter at some point during implementation regulations uh, an fm strategy uh, focused on sustainability and triple bottom line will uh, deal with compliance issues many businesses uh, you know, falter on regulatory compliance from physical space management uh, because they didn't pay attention to this. I mean, I've taken all the enterprise risk elements, but refused to, or just over, you know, you know looked beyond uh, the, the, the physical space and the requirements for compliance. Uh, signages, public liability, insurance, training, uh, you know, first aid, uh, stakeholder concerns. These are all ways to support the occupants uh, you know, and, and the well-being of the occupant, the safety and security of occupants, uh, knowing fully well that the productivity of these occupants is, is, is kind of tied directly to the profitability and the triple bottom line of this uh, organization. We cannot uh, ignore any of this. I'm just going to take a few minutes to um, share with you some, uh, some case studies of how uh, energy efficiency and, and, and the use of specific technology has uh, helped some organizations across the world uh, to, 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 to become more efficient and save costs and make a lot of uh, money and profitability. I'm going to just uh, close this slide and I'll share a new screen. Okay. So uh, do you see my screen? Uh, I'm showing a, a, a university uh, saves 30% uh, using any scope. Do you see the screen? Yeah, we can see. Okay, very good, very good. Thank you very much. So this is a university in the United States. Uh, uh, the, 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 main, the main issue they had uh, was uh, power quality. They, they, they weren't quite sure uh, they were getting uh, good quality uh, electricity from the grid and they wanted to install a uh, 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 system to monitor the quality of power uh, because the equipments were becoming uh, you know kind of getting damaged due to surges from power supply and eventually they not only solved the quality issue but they also made a 30 percent energy saving because the system deployed uh, uh, any scope revealed a Problem that have been on that note for five years and generated 30% per month in terms of energy uh, savings. Uh, I also have another one here. This is 7 Eleven. 7 Eleven across Malaysia deployed uh, to about 616 plus sites, and uh, they were able to not only uh, have full real time energy visibility to what. Uh, you know, all the wasted energy they've been having in their system, they were able to also, uh, you know, uh, prevent uh, their business from going under, you know, they, they close shop when the shop is no longer profitable, right? And, and that's part of what I was explaining earlier on. If you're, you're either making so much money uh, or you are able to watch how your money is, is bleeding out, right? So uh, because they were able to save on energy efficiency, on energy uh, costs, they were able to keep a lot of their business, uh, a lot of many of their shops uh, running uh, uh, through, uh, you know, the, the, the recession. And then Starbucks in, in India had a very, uh, you know, massive uh, 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 benefit from deploying technology to manage their energy efficiency. Uh, what was the problem? Uh, they were suffering from air conditioning units that were being run outside business and operational hours. And you know. If you get your energy bills at the end of the month, it doesn't tell you when individual assets came on and when they, you know, they went off, right? So you don't have that visibility into, uh, into uh, uh, what's actually uh, costing you, uh, you know, energy. But specifically being able to know what assets or what equipment was consuming energy uh, 24 hours real time, uh, help them to realize things that were being left on, you know, and, and took correction. And immediately, they found just uh, deploying this uh, solution, we're able to uh, get an ROI of four months uh, for that project, and so many other uh, case studies. Uh, so, so uh, 
to, to, to conclude my, my, my presentation, I'll just say, uh, uh, if you have to deploy an FM strategy for your organization, uh, we are available um, to advise. Uh, if you have to, uh, if you have to uh, uh, deploy uh, energy efficiency solutions, we are available. If you have uh, to improve your user experiences um, with your building users and you want to attract the best talent, you have a vision of what your ambience and your space should look like, and you need some help with, uh, uh, with that kind of uh, changes to your, to your spaces to get the best talent and improve the quality of your workforce, then definitely uh, we are available for you. So you can, you can, you can contact, uh, contact me, Paul Erubami. My email is paul.erubami at maxlego.com or paul.erubami at consolidon.com. So uh, uh, I'm part of the Consolidon network and uh, uh, I think I'm the only uh, network partner in the passive management space. Uh, it's a unique position to be in because uh, every organization requires facility management advisory and solutions. And so why there's so much competition in all the other spaces um, with business support and consulting, I can monopolize the FM solution space for now. So thank you very much. And that's it for my presentation. I would like to take your questions and we can have a, a discussion to wrap up. Yeah, and thank you so much, Paul, for the uh, very insightful presentation. Uh, there's a lot that we learned, uh, you know, over the course of the last 40 minutes. Uh, if there are any questions, uh, you know, to all the attendees, please feel free to chat them and uh, you know, to type them in the chat box. I mean, we'd love to hear from you. Very thoughtful insights, Paul. Good presentation. Thank Probably you. you may have to pull up a slide uh, now to just tell the audience, attendees, what are your services, how you can you know, yeah. enable some of this. Yep. Because it's not one-time consulting and you know, yeah. investment. Probably it has to be continuous, right? Yes. Probably yeah. there might be some training solutions. There might be some other solutions which you offer yeah. so they can you know continue the journey exactly. of you know, how to save energy, save cost, and probably you not know, create clean environment. Definitely, definitely. So, so, so basically uh, our, our role is to support the core business. So uh, every organization can focus on their core business and uh, allow uh, us support your, uh, all of the supporting services, infrastructure, te uh, technical infrastructure, physical spaces, uh, you know, everything, including how to uh, optimize your costs um, re relating to these areas, and it, it, and we drive directly to profitability, and that's and that's the uh, uh, the, 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 the big uh, the big uh, point for us because uh, you, you could be very focused on your core business, trying to make a lot of return from there, uh, but you could be bleeding out on the other side in terms of your expenses. So let us help control your cost, give you the kind of value that gives your team uh, the kind of productivity that. Uh, that helps to uh, give you optimum results and your stakeholder satisfaction. Okay. Okay, perfect. I don't think we have any further questions. So, Okay, so I think maybe, uh, you know, we, we've we all got your uh, contact details. So I think, you know, uh, note to the attendees is that if you ever want to contact, I mean, if you want to contact uh, Paul, you know how to reach him or reach out to, uh, you know, your contact, any of your contacts at Consolidon as well. And we'd be happy to put you in touch with Paul. Uh, Paul, thank you so much for your time, uh, for sharing your insights. Um, I'm sure all the attendees had a very insightful session. Uh, we really look forward to engaging with you, uh, you know, in the future, uh, all, the pan all the attendees as well. So thank you so much for your time. Uh, so this concludes the webinar. Look, look, we look forward to seeing you at some of the other sessions as well. So do, uh, do check out the Connected Insights website for all the other events at the Connected Insights Web Summit. And we look forward to having you there. Thank, Thank you so you much, everybody. Thank everybody you. Everybody could just turn on the video for one second. Thanks, and Paul. Oh, the social media. Sure, sure. We can take a quick photo.
Yeah, Paul, if you could just stop screen sharing for a minute, if that's okay. Okay. One second. Okay, awesome. Okay. We'll just give everybody like a few minutes to turn on their videos and then we'll take the picture and then and then we'll be on our way. One, two, three, thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Er, sir. Er, sir. Yeah. I think you should take it again. Some people just joined now. <laughs> no oh, okay. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> For sure. Okay, one, two, three, and please. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Thanks, Paul. Thank you Bye. so much. Bye. Bye. Thank you.